Let's bring our NFL insider in, Tori Gurley. Tori, we've been around this situation a ton over the years. It's, I think, rarely mutual, but it seems like maybe in this case it is. What do you know about it? It's never mutual. A player does not want to get cut. (laughs) I've been cut a bunch of times, and trust me, I would have rather been on the squad and and just finished it out, but it's best to get cut at the end of the year where now he has the opportunity to really figure out where he wants to play, and I'm willing to bet it's going to probably be the Green Bay Packers. It wouldn't shock me if he ends up in Green Bay because he is a Wisconsin kid, and I know for a fact he is a big-time Packer fan. Okay, so let's just unpack it a little bit here. I, I was on the phone to Houston this morning talking to my football guys, and they said, listen, it's $17.5 million in cap relief for the Texans, country club atmosphere, and J.J. is the president of the country club. If you're going to shake that up, what are you going to do? Probably get rid of the head of the country club. That was one thing. Um, just that there's more to this than meets the eyes. And you've been on this story for quite some time. What do you know about it internally? Yeah, J.J. is not the player that he once was. You know, back in the day, he was able to get double-digit sacks, and now um, he's more of an ambassador than a football player. And how he was able to get those sacks, he was playing outside of the scheme, and he was leaving his teammates out to dry. And, you know, it gets old when your production comes down. So for close to $18 million, I would rather get rid of you and bring in a guy that's hungrier and healthier and just let you, you know, you know, wish you will with you going to another squad. So that's the nature of the beast. And, you know, JJ is a great ambassador, but at the end of the day, it's all about being a hell of a football player. And if not, they push you out of the door. No doubt. Listen, we're going to move on to the CFL for both you guys, for the benefit of all of our CFL fans watching. However, kudos to both of you who said the Buccaneers were going to boat race the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. And it happened. Lynch, you first. You want to talk about the Super Bowl with Tori and what you saw come out of it? Um, Tori, how do you figure the way Tampa Bay have played in the playoffs? Just fantastic. And the whole team played fantastic. The final game, the big game at home, first time ever the home team has been the uh, visit, has been the host. Uh, I couldn't believe it. So what you're thinking there? They were so fired up. There's no way anybody was going to beat Tampa Bay last Sunday. Yeah, I wasn't shocked at all. Uh, You and I both claim, I I mean, we all picked the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, They just have a better team from top to bottom. If we evaluate all 53 guys, I would rather have the Tampa side than just be top heavy with the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Travis Kelsey. Like, that's not enough to win a Super Bowl. And as I mentioned the year before, those guys should not have won the Super Bowl. Like, Jimmy G literally... He was one or two throws away from having San Francisco as being the winner. Like, those guys had the game. So, uh, the way Kansas City got there and how they've been playing football throughout the year, it's not championship when you're always playing from behind. You cannot make uh, a living always trying to dig yourself out of a hole when you're down 21 points or 28 and think Patrick Mahomes can be Superman. I figured if Tom Brady had a lead, by 10 plus points, that was all she wrote. And something that really came to light was how the defensive ends for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made it extremely hard for Patrick Mahomes to be comfortable in the pocket. They flushed him out of the pocket, it shrank the field, and now he was forced to throw on a run. And that played right into Tampa's game plan. So kudos to those guys and congrats. And you just got to stop betting against the GOAT. Like I, I had to learn the hard way years ago. And I, Anytime Tom Brady's in the Super Bowl, I'm betting on Tom Brady. Even if he was 80 years old, give me Tom. Okay, I just want to say hey to some of our viewers. Nicholson Farm writes in, watching on YouTube. Hello from Regina, Sask. Ivan, the Argos fan, says KC was really hurting on the offensive line. That made the D much easier for them to win. So there's some stuff there. Ivan says, hey, y'all, we are talking CFL. After all, yes, we are. So let's move to the CFL because it's been a very hot week, Tori, even though it's been minus 50 out here. Frenzy's got his list, and Lynch, just very quick, can you go through your grades? I asked Lynch to grade each team's free agency. Can you remember it, John? And then I'll get yours, Tori, as much as you can, but Lynch has it. I got uh, Riders A+. I thought they did an A-plus job. Getting uh, Michael Johnson back's great. 
to plug that hole. Larry Dean's a great middle linebacker. And Evan Johnson, the kid from Regina, playing for the Huskies in Saskatoon for three years at right guard. Ideal for us. Exactly what we need. So I thought they won the draft. They, they got more good people than anybody else did. Uh, Edmonton got one good player. That's all I can see, Tori. James Wilder. Is, uh, you're smiling. <laughs> Sean Lemon, uh, Derek Dennis. But anyways, continue. Sorry. Okay, continue. Ham- Hamilton. Everything was actually done before the, the camp, so everything was okay with them. They didn't have to do much. They got Seattle uh, and Evans, an outside a defensive back, but that's the only big thing I saw them do. Uh, Winnipeg had everything done before camp. BC, I gave them a C plus, getting Shaq Cooper. They're really crazy about getting Shaquel Cooper back in, in BC. I mean, they think he's the greatest thing to sliced underwear. Do you like him? <laughs> do, do, do you know who he is? <laughs> yes, I'm familiar with them, but since Slice Underwear, I like that one. I, I've never. It's heard my own, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you can have it. Okay. <laughs> Are you? Have you gone through every team no, yet? Yes, yes, I've done the whole thing. You uh, did. They also got uh, White Whitehead in from Winnipeg. It's Speed, Larry Whitehead, Lucky Whitehead, and lucky, uh, Chris Rainey Whitehead. is back in BC. He always was there, so he's back. They've signed him back. Ottawa didn't do much. They got everything done before. Signed Don Uama, Sam Linebacker. And it's the fan Charles from the Ram, Regina Ram, not really. He was playing at Edmonton, and they got him. I think that's a real plus. Canadian defensive tackle. Been in the NFL for four or five years and actually started in some situations. So he's not a newcomer. Montreal did a pretty good job. Uh, we got a real good catch here, I think. Armando Seal, best defensive tackle around. And they got him from Edmonton. Uh, they got the levels of the linebacker and Chris Chesty, another linebacker, in. Uh, defensive lineman Wally Barron and uh, Nick Usher. So that's the way I saw it pretty well. And uh, right. I rated the Riders A plus for what they did. Well, hang on to those. We'll read them again next hour. Tori, any arguments with those? Or what do you think about CFL free agency this week? No, I agree. You know, I, I like what Sass did. You know, I'm, I'm a Rider fan now since my wife is, is from there. So, you know, I'm pulling for him. I'm also pulling for Edmonton football team um, because I, I played with those guys and, you know, I believe in Trevor Harris. So as I, I, I will all continue to say this for the rest of the year, I have Edmonton winning a great cup. Okay, well, I had this in the uh, warm-up. Farhan Lalji has Edmonton winning free agency plus being the top Grey Cup contender. And we have their head coach coming on next hour and Jamie Elizondo. We're all very much looking forward to that. But how about the Argos? There's concern amongst the Argo fan base that their quarterback's not experienced. They got a hell of a D-line obviously, but what do you see with your former team, the Boatman? They can give me a call. You know, I love to consult for them and help them out if they need it. <laughs> well, ball, you know how to get in contact with me. Give me a call. I'm the best scout you got. Well, no kidding, and we had Murph on this week. I mean, when they do play, it's a not an F, it's when. I don't think you're going to be in the stadium or I'm going to be in the stadium or frenzy. It's going to be playing without fans. Eventually we'll get back in the place, Tori. And I guess when they do kick off, where are the Argos like this? Are their fans legitimately have a right to be concerned about the quarterback position there? I definitely would because it's just, it's a big question mark. You know, it's a big drop off from what you had in years past. And you having guys like Trevor Harris and, and Ricky Ray, and now you know you have a guy that's not as proven. So we'll see how it works out for the boatman coming up this season. They got Pimpkin again, the guy they got in the end. Antonio of last year. Pipkin, that's another one, yeah. Antonio Pimpkin, the last end, the end of last year, got the bad name though, eh? But <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't matter. But he's actually a pretty good quarterback. Remember him from last year, about the last two games with the Alouettes. With the Alouettes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, he is good. Some viewer comments here, Ivan who's an Argos fan, says Cam Newton to the Argos. Hang on, we're going to come back in the NFL in a minute, Tori. Jack Fulton says, as a Stamps fan, I have to say the Argos have signed the best group of any CFL team in free agency. Yes, and it's got a lot of other teams whining, saying the Argos aren't adhering to the gentleman's agreement of the cap floor. What, do you think they would? Boo, who, yeah, did you think they would? John Murphy there, do you think they'd adhere to that? (laughs) Jason in Red Deer says a lot of big name free agents left, and I wrote those down. This is CFL.ca's list. Uh, Enoch Mwamba, Cam Judge, Macbeth, Justin Medlock, uh, Matt O'Donnell, Justin Tuggle, Taylor Loeffler, Alex Bazzi, Rico Murray, and they don't even have Brett Lowther on the list, and he's my favorite kicker in the league, so there are a lot of big names. But 
back to the NFL. There's some juicy stuff floating around about who's going to quarterback the Patriots next year and and Dak Prescott. I mean, this quarterback chase carousel, uh, Tory, is the thing to watch in the NFL of the months ahead. Yeah, I definitely love it. I think, um, you know, Cam Newton is is going to be look, out looking for a job because the way he performed in New England, um, it, it wasn't too well. He started out great, and he literally just kind of, um, you know, ran out of gas. And I, I don't know if it's because of the wear and tear or if it was just a bad fit. So, you know, we'll see what New England does when it comes to uh, being – you know, very active in, in free, well, not in free agency, but just even trade. You know, I, I keep hearing Jimmy G headed back to New England, so we'll see if that happens. Bob Kraft walking down that beach in Miami. He's got to get serious about football. His team isn't playing very well. He's got to call Mr. Belichick and say, hey, Bill, we better have a talk, eh? Things are changing. And for Belichick, that's the worst situation for him, I think, since 2003. And he doesn't have a quarterback. That team is falling apart. And, uh, Tori, I think right now the New England Patriots could easily finish last next year in their division. Would you buy that? It wouldn't shock me, and um, but it could give them draft capital. So I, I don't know what Bill Belichick is doing. Uh, last year they had eight players to, on defense, eight starters on defense not to play. Um, he told them to, you know, sit out and, and take the year off. So we will see what they do moving forward, you know, I, you know, I, I'm not going to doubt Bill Belichick, not just yet. You know, he has a lot of equity built into being a championship coach. So we will see how he can um, maneuver out of this uh, circumstance that he's in. On Get Up this morning, they were saying that they had the New England reporter out of ESPN on there. And he said on talk shows, the Patriots fans in Boston ready to give Bill a pass for one year. That's it. <laughs> you stub your toe and you're not in the Super Bowl next year. There's going to be heat on Belichick. And the reporter's like, this is what six Super Bowls get you in Boston. Yeah, yeah, right. a, a year. <laughs> That's it. Uh, viewer wants to know, Tori, where you think Deshaun's going? Deshaun Watson? I hope he goes to the 49ers. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pulling for him to go there. Like He and Kyle Shanahan and that offense would be lethal. It, it would, Man, it would be magical. Uh, listen, we have a lot going on. We'll pick up with them. We'll let you go, sir. Stay warm. I, I got to ask you real quick in 30 seconds or less, your recruiting company, tell us what you're doing there. looks like it's been very successful. Yes. So home field advantage, my recruiting company, you can go to torygurley.com. Matter of fact, um, coming up on Sundays, I'm going to have a open zoom call for kids who want to learn about recruiting Canadian, American, I want you guys to log in. It's $40. You can go to my website. You sign up for it. And I will educate you on how this thing works because a lot of parents just don't know the rules to recruiting. You might have a kid that has the ability in the world to play at the next level, but he needs to connect with the right people. And I just want to be that bridge for any and everyone. ToriGurley.com, home field advantage. Glad I asked. Tori, stay warm. Miss you out here. We'll do it again soon. All right. Thanks for having me. Our NFL insider. And the best on television, by the way. What oh, you no that? doubt about that. Absolutely. The best on television. Tori Gurley. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 